Good morning, afternoon, evening to everyone, and welcome to this episode of Cisco Chat Live from home. Um, I am joined today by an esteemed panel of guests, DD, our VP of Product Strategy and Marketing for Small Business, Rachel, our Director of Collaboration and Marketing, and Chandon, our Senior Director of Products and Cisco Business. Um, a few small things to cover before we get started today. A reminder that we will be um, taking your questions live at the end of the show, so please post them in the comments if you're watching on .com, Virtual Experience Hub, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, or use the Cisco chat hashtag on Twitter. We'll be glad to take them towards the end of the show. Um, today, we will be covering Cisco de Design's portfolio and the go-to-market strategy for small business. So I'm gonna kick us off with Didi, welcome. Um, I'd love to ask you a few questions to get started. First, how would you characterize all of the things going on today that's impacting small businesses around the world? Hey, Devin, thanks for having me on this uh, on this show, and a big welcome to all of the all of our viewers here. Um, I think before we get into the small business, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge the new normal that all of us are are you know going through right now. I can totally relate to this gentleman in the picture. I don't have my puppy on my lap right now, but I've got uh, two boys who can run into this room anytime. So, you know, it's it's really the, the new normal where, I mean, typically I would be doing this wearing a business suit and, you know, from the Cisco TV studio. Uh, but instead, I'm in my in my living room. I've got my, you know, oatmeal going here. I'm wearing flip flops. And uh, so it's welcome to the new normal. And not all of it is too bad, right? Because we're not getting stuck in traffic. You know, we can work in flip-flops, like I said. So just wanted to take a minute to acknowledge the new normal, which is actually gonna be the theme for a lot of the topics that we're gonna cover today. Um, so yeah, that's the new normal. Now, when we specifically look at small businesses, uh, there's a few things where, you know, that I'd go over in terms of the new normal. The first thing is the most basic definition of, you know, what is work was your office. And office has gone from being you know, a physical location to just a place where you work from. This first picture that you see, that's my team. And we were just giving each other high fives, you know, at the, uh, at the end of a successful project. And so, you know, that's, that's basically how we work these days. The lines between home and office are completely blurred. And we see this, you know, continuing, you know, even through and beyond the pandemic. A lot of people who used to go to physical offices are just not going to be doing that, right? It's going to be this notion of a hybrid workplace. If you look at the picture below, what I call competition, of course, there's the traditional comp competitors that our small businesses need to uh, need to deal with. But I, I'd say, like, perhaps the biggest competition right now are the bad guys. These are the hackers. These, are, these guys are going after identity theft. They're looking for our data. They're looking for applications. Why? Because in the past, you secured your office and you were good. You put stuff in the cloud and that's secure and that's good. But guess what? Now all of us are working from home. And so that gives you know, access to uh, a, a lot of these, the, the bad actors, because the attack surface is, is gone up. And so I think the number one thing the small business are going to have to grapple with is competition from uh, the, the bad guys. And you know, FBI says this just in the last three months, the number of uh, the amount of cyber crime, unfortunately, has quadrupled. And we know 60% of small businesses that, you know, uh, go through a, a well-planned security attack, they don't last for more than six months. And so this is unfortunately the new reality, the new normal we'll have to live with. Um, in terms of shopping, you know, in the past it used to be mostly around increasing foot traffic in your store, which is still the case. but. We can't get too close to each other. We can't have too many people on aisle nine. And that's kind of the new normal. And if you've got too many people on aisle nine, there, you, somebody needs to let the store manager know. And, and that's, that's going to be the, the new face of shopping, like being able to count people how close they are and use a lot of the technology for inventory management as well. And last but not least, what I call DIY IT. Yes, we love our acronyms. This is do it yourself IT. Uh, because guess what happened during this whole pandemic? There's no on-site IT staff. Nobody could come to my house and fix my network. Nobody could go to office and, and fix something else. So a lot of us, you know, have taken on IT as our night and weekend job. And so 
the technologies that small businesses need to start using, they have to be simple because guess they'll be doing a lot of this IT by themselves. So I can go on and on, but this is the new normal, Devin, and back to you. I couldn't agree more, Didi. And um, I myself have two boys at home right now who could walk in at any moment. So, so bear with us. Um, and I love this D this notion of a DIY IT. You know, given that, what do you think Cisco's strategy is to help some of these small businesses during this time? During right. So, so one of the things we did was uh, we kind of took a took a step back, and instead of talking about you know one product, one technology at a time, what we what we found is we're in this unique position where we can solve some of the top challenges that our customers are facing you know go in, during this pandemic and even coming out you know when when things start opening up and those are kind of the five pillars of our strategy if you will these are the five areas we're going to be focused as a company from a technology standpoint from a go-to-market standpoint how we enable our customers our partners and so here's the five that you have in front of you and kind of going from left to right it, it, almost in that you know order of priority the first one is we need to enable our customers to work from home, period, at the end. Um, if you don't have a good work from home policy, the company's not gonna survive, literally, right? And so, and it's way beyond just, you know, effective collaboration solutions. It's gotta be secure. You have to have very easy networking. The next thing is, you know, whether it's uh, your, your store or your office or a library or a hospital, um, this whole safe distancing thing is gonna stay with us for a while, right? And also have that connected to other sensors like you know, air conditioners and you know, cameras and things like that. So this whole notion of workplace monitoring becomes important because the workplaces are not gonna look the same. Which brings me to the third one, which is around new office. You know, the definition of the new office is gonna change. We'll see a lot more shared resources, shared conference room, shared collaboration, right? Because about 70, 80 people, uh, percent of the people are not going to be going to the offices on a full-time basis. So we've got a set of solutions that focus on this new office or the future of the, of the office. Um, the fourth area is what I call always on business. One of the things that we saw through this whole pandemic was cloud technologies just did better than on-premise technologies. Because again, you didn't have on-site IT staff. If something were to go wrong, you know, if you can fix it, run it, operate it, license it, buy it in the cloud, your business would just stay on a lot more than depending on, on humanware trying to go fix things. So we'll, we see this whole resiliency that small businesses need uh, being delivered through cloud technologies. And again, you know, whether it's our networking solutions, our collaboration solutions, security solutions, a lot of the great stuff you're going to hear later in the show was catering to this always on business. Last but not least, I talked about this earlier, really unfortunate, we're seeing a huge spike in cybercrime. And friends, it's only gonna increase, right? Is This is only as there's more attack surfaces, more bad actors, cybercrime protection is gonna be super, super important for our small businesses. And this is not just, you know, putting a firewall and protecting the perimeter. Today, the identity is the perimeter. That's what it's come to. So we're talking about, securing the individual, securing their devices, securing their data, their applications, all of this while they're working from home, while they're working you know, on the road. And so that's the fifth area of focus, Devin. These are the five pillars of our strategy, how we're gonna help our small business customers through and beyond the pandemic. I, I think that's an important point that you make. You know, It's through the pandemic, but also beyond. I, I think about things like workplace monitoring that not only give us an opportunity to, you know, safe distance and do real time monitoring, but even post this pandemic and, and future three years down the road, this gives people the ability to monitor more than just people distancing in a show floor or a grocery store. It's monitoring their equipment, their IoT devices, everything, right? So I think that's really key. Um, great strategy, by the way. One final question for you, Dee. Sure. Um, you know, yeah. one. No one small business is the same. We know that, right? They're different sizes. They come in different, um, you know, industries. All of these businesses, um, are they applicable to every small business? How does this Cisco like segment our market here? Absolutely. And if you don't mind building the slide out uh, completely here, it's got some animation. So 
Look, Devin, every large company started small, right? Including Cisco, including the company that you work for. And, and so, and even before joining Cisco, me personally, I was in startup land for a few years. So I've lived through this. And what you're looking at, this bullseye chart, is, is literally how a company evolves. When you start out less than 50 employees, you don't really have anybody dedicated to IT. Uh, it's somebody's night or weekend job. And the requirements from an IT standpoint at this phase of a company's evolution is pretty straightforward. You want secure connectivity, secure Wi-Fi, secure way to access the internet. That's pretty much it. I call this zone the small, small zone, right? It's, it's really when a company starts. Then you get to a size which is being shown by the green belt over here. Companies between 50 to about 150 employees. Now the CEO, the board of the company, they, they decide it's probably worth having one or two people dedicated to IT, right? I call this the IT unicorn zone because the same guy or gal that is fixing the whiteboard, you know, setting up the wireless access points, setting up all the Microsoft applications, setting up security, setting up emails. So they're really the, they're the IT uni unicorns. But then the company grows even bigger than that. And, you know, all the way to, to let's say 300 employees. Now you've got fairly sophisticated requirements. You're, you're a mid-sized to a small size, you know, company uh, and we have people dedicated for IT, somebody who can actually spell networking and security and cloud and be dedicated to that. Um, so as you can see here, this is the true state of the industry today. It is also exactly how we as Cisco are building our products, building our offers, going to market, enabling our partners, eventually helping our customers in this small, small, mid, small and large, small because you know, one size does not fit all. Oh, it most certainly does not. And I, you know, I think about my uh, a buddy of mine who owns his own business here in the Bay Area, and um, they have been going for 25 years strong, have less than 15 employees, um, and have a, I would say, part-time college kid doing their IT. And it, um, it definitely resembles a lot of what you're talking about. So thank you so much. I think this was really, really helpful. Um, I, now I'd love to introduce Rachel to discuss our um, web portfolio announcement. I know, Rachel, um, there were a few announcements made recently, and I'd love for you to recap um, how Cisco has made the WebEx portfolio and explain how it helps small businesses. Yeah, I would love to introduce that to you. So thank you for letting me join you guys today. Um, the WebEx work bundle is calling, meeting, and messaging all in one. I also, we all have friends with uh, small businesses and I was talking uh, to one of my friends when the pandemic sort of started and was telling them, well, hey, if you need a um, video conferencing solution, you should look into WebEx. And they thought, whoa, 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 I don't, I don't need anything like that. I don't need Cisco, I don't need WebEx. Like they thought it was too big, that it was too much. And so this WebEx work bundle is truly positioned for those small businesses who may have originally thought of Cisco as complex or ex expensive. It is absolutely not. So this is one starting point price. So it's $19.95 per user, and it's bundled with calling, meeting, and messaging all delivered in the cloud so that you have one easy solution, one payment. Um, so whether you have one employee or a thousand, you can expand and contract that contract uh, month over month. So it's it's truly designed for those small businesses where um, if you're thinking about that, um, the chart that Didi just showed, no matter where you are in that range, this price works for you. And it's truly cloud solution and cloud delivered. So if you think about like, how people are working throughout their day. Normally you would think of like WebEx as just a meeting. So I would love for you to think of it as something totally different. So if you go to the next slide, it sort of just shows you like how you would use this calling meeting and messaging throughout the day. And um, the calling, for instance, would allow your employees to have a phone number that is not their personal cell phone. So that way they can use their own equipment. You don't have to have any equipment in order to take advantage of this offer. They can use their own phone, but it's masked by a number that you provide them. So that's very, that's that's really nice. And then the, the meeting um, is just like we're in WebEx right now. That's how we're broadcasting live. So you can, um, don't think of uh, WebEx as just these formal meetings. It could be uh, hey, Devin, I'm going to call you real quick. Let's join my personal meeting room. Or, hey, I want to schedule a meeting every Thursday um, at 2 o'clock, and that's a meeting. 
but you can also host live events. That's also something that you can you can add on. Um, and then the messaging is maybe not what you think of uh, as WebEx, but it is a, an environment that you can use throughout their day. You can connect it to Salesforce.com. You can connect it to Trello. There's lots of different um, APIs that you can connect the messaging piece to, um, and we call it uh, WebEx Teams. And um, you have unlimited storage, so you can transfer files back and forth um, when you're remoting, working remote, like that is imperative for all of us. I hardly ever even check my email anymore. People know that they need to send oh me- Oh my gosh, I was just gonna say that to you. Like <laughs> I am moved completely away from email and I live on Teams right now. Yeah, if I get an email, somebody knows, hey, they send me a message, hey, go check your email. Because <laughs> they, we live within this team space. And so just that, and that's why I was saying like, just really rethink the way you think of WebEx. It's not just about these formal um, meetings. It's truly about like using this persistent collaboration throughout your entire day. Um, and it is, it's designed to work like that. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate whether you have a thousand employees, um, so you can have up to a thousand or just one employee. Um, it's all designed for you and you can expand and contract as needed. Um, and if you are that IT unicorn that Didi mentioned, uh, the nice thing about Cisco WebEx, it's all managed through one admin portal. So it's called the WebEx Control Hub. If you wanted to look it up, you don't need a PhD. You can be that college part-time kid who is managing this solution. And you, you're, it's really easy to manage because it's all under one single pane of glass. Um, you can see like, you can uh, add, add users, remove users, manage your account through all that one space. Um, so that's really nice. Um, and also with Control Hub, you can manage devices. And so that's another offering that we have. It's not part of the WebEx work bundle, but it is in addition. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we have just a, a view of a lot of the WebEx um, devices that sort of that accompany this offering. So this is really targeted towards small business who, who want to, maybe they want to try a phone or maybe they want to equip one of their conference rooms with one of these devices, but they don't want to go all in and put them everywhere. So if you're ready to try, these are uh, these these uh, prices are at a monthly premium and you have a three year investment. So you decide that you are going to buy one phone for three years and it averages out to about $4 a month. So these are definitely lower priced um, but you get the exact same experience as the enterprises and the governments uh, that are running the same equipment today so the experience is the exact same we just have it at a, at a more attractive price point for these uh, for you guys to try out this is great and at 1995 for your bundle in the beginning rachel i mean that's less than a netflix subscription right it, it is it is and it's the same and it's really attractive for like if you picture a company like a, a cpa firm so during tax time they have a lot of employees and they need to make sure that everyone has access to these communication tools and then after that you know they they contract and so you're able to we we grow with your business and so that that's why this bundle is really targeted toward this group that's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and I think pivoting from, you know, the collaboration side of the house and how we work from home uh, seamlessly is, is the networking side of the house, right? How do we keep our business up and running and that business continuity? So um, with that, Chan, I'd love to introduce you. Um, and I know that yesterday Cisco announced some updates to the Cisco business networking portfolio. Can you give the audience a little recap of those announcements? I hear they were pretty exciting. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Devin, for, for hosting me here. It is uh, like a really good chat here, learning about all of the things that we are doing for our small medium businesses. Uh, what I want to capture here is that, you know, when you think about the small medium business, the networking needs are not small. The networking needs are a lot more dynamic in the current environment, as Didi talked about different aspects that are going on because of COVID. Um, and before we go into the actual portfolio, I want to kind of kind of get a stage of what you just said about what we launched yesterday. Um, we have a, a umbrella brand called Cisco Design, which is covering everything across architecture and is a front of our small business focused omni channel experience for our customers. Cisco Business Portfolio is the portfolio that is focused on products for our customers that are looking for network infrastructure. That network infrastructure means Cisco brand switches, wireless APs, and 
Cisco brand routers or security gateways. As some of you may already know, we actually launched our Cisco business wireless portfolio. Uh, that's the product that I have here. In fact, my home network today is running on Cisco business wireless. Uh, you know, that's the new normal, that's the new office. For... Did I install it? Is it easy enough for me to do? Well, it starts with the packaging experience. It starts with how are you going to set it up with the DIY IT concept. So what we have kept in mind is that all you need is a simple plug and play system for switches or for APs that you can set up on the network. Focus on the DIY customer with capabilities that are enterprise related if you were to let this manage by a managed service provider. So it gives you both the flexibility and capabilities. If you go uh, deeper into the next section here, which is Cisco Business Dashboard, that's your start point for majority of the network management. That's on the next slide. Um, it kind of covers uh, a new version of a network management tool that is streamlined for a user interface for that smart user. I would call them as intelligent novices. They are really intelligent about their business, but they might be novice in IT. The idea here is that we don't want them to do a PhD in networking to run their business. This dashboard allows them to run the business and the network to adapt to their business needs. Uh, it comes with a very simple intuitive interface. All the network devices, which is switches or APs, are all we call a zero touch deployment or plug and play. So you plug them in, you can do scanning through QR code, or otherwise the network detects them and you can start configuring and managing them. Each one of them come with a configuration management capabilities. What that means is now, for example, look at the home network that is also an office network. You want to configure certain things, including, let's say, uh, you know, VLAN segregation. What that means is that I want to make sure that my office part of the infrastructure is away from my Netflix devices or other streaming devices that are there within my home network. You could do that all simply using the dashboard that is there. And I should also mention one more thing, that this dashboard could be running in on-prem if you want to, or could run in the cloud of your choice. And that goes back to the same thing that if I am that DIY IT user, where I have to now give this access to many of my users that are sitting and working from home, I could be managing those networks using the Cisco Business Dashboard through the cloud. So I don't need to go to everybody's house to configure or do anything else, and I can just manage this sitting in that dashboard. It is for that business user. Now that's the dashboard that covers everything, including the Cisco Business Wireless that we launched. And now we are actually launching the next step of it, which is Cisco Business Switches. Uh, we are very excited about it because that switch line is, you know, again, focused on, you need a footprint of switching more than ever because within your home as well, while you want everything on the Wi-Fi, you still want to segregate capabilities that are hardwired that you want to have a committed bandwidth available all the time to a certain, you know, telepresence units, WebEx units, or other such capabilities and segregate your network, which is office portion from your home network, if you will, using VLANs and segmentations. That allows it. The second thing that you are also doing is, and we are seeing it in many customers, is that there is a need of flexibility when it, respect, you know, it comes to powering their endpoints. Didi talked about cameras, DD, you know, the IoT devices, all of them use what we you know as POE or power or ethernet. Now you could actually power your IoT devices using this flexible system that we have and focused with security, which means that whatever enterprise grade security that you are used to on a Cisco product line, we are bringing that to this product line as well. And with the feature sets and the port uh, flexibility that we have, all of these switches kind of start at globally at a price list of less than $200. So tuned for that particular market, tuned for our customer base that needs a switch at home to build their own network as if it is their office or to have multiple offices where the switches are needed. One other piece that I want to highlight here on these switches is that they come with something called Cisco support uh, you know, backing of one year, which means that just like our enterprise customers, you can call our Cisco support TAC in 10 languages, and then they can support you in your, your local support TAC infrastructure. These switches also come with what we call as limited lifetime warranty, which is very huge for our customers. Uh, and, you know, what that means is that they are, they have a lifetime warranty in case if a hardware were to fail, you have a commitment from Cisco to replace that hardware free of cost. 
Now, that is huge considering this time and ever in the small medium businesses that you want to have customers that have that assurance and a brand backing from a company like Cisco saying that if something were to fail, you know, I'm not left alone. So that's, that's huge. Uh, if you go to the next slide, it kind of talks a little bit more detail about our two switches line. The Cisco 350 series managed switches that I talk about here, these are starting at $270. Uh, they are top of the line managed series switches in the Cisco business portfolio. They support V4, IPv4, IPv6. They have embedded probe for dashboard connectivity. What that means is you don't need another infrastructure to run a management connection with your cloud. They all come inbuilt with it. They support web UI. A lot of our customers also use and are very, you know, are fan of CLI or command line interface. We allow that here as well. So if you want to run that, you could do it. Uh, uplinks 1 gig, 10, 10 gig, which is where the capabilities would be there. POE plus support up to 740 watt. So this switch becomes your network and power fabric, if you will, for IoT and your user application devices. Uh, security comes in built into it. We have something called time-based access control, which is very important. So your office opens from nine to five. You want to make sure that at that time, the devices are allowing the access after five o'clock. You want to switch off that access to anybody coming and trying to intrude into the network. You can do that. Uh, the features like S-Flow are supported. That gives you sampled flow, which means that you can actually check what is going on from a flow perspective, who's talking to whom, what type of protocols are they using, applications are using. All of those capabilities are built into this. One last point on 350 series managed switches. This supports something called advanced replacement. What that means is we know that this switch line is for customers that are very important. They run their entire network infrastructure because the business is pretty important. So we will not wait for the customer to get the switch back to us in case if it were to fail. With advanced replacements, we will ship the switch as if, and as soon as it failed, let's say, should it, should it fail in a network, while waiting for customers to ship back the failed switch. That means business continuity. That means that we are very sure about supporting this customer infrastructure. So that's what this switch line does for them. So no downtime for any business, right, Chandan? Absolutely. It's great. Yeah. The, the next one, which is the CBS 250 series, it's our smart switch series. They support on box web UI. They have connectivity to Cisco business dashboard, again with embedded pro, which means no need to connect another virtual infrastructure for having connectivity to dashboard and the dashboard could be running in the cloud. Same type of infrastructure support here, POE plus supports up to 30 watt on, on a particular port. That means you could power a lot of cameras, a lot of IoT devices, uh, you know, different type of variations on them. And these switches support what we call as limited lifetime warranty which means that if this switch was to fail, you can bring it back to your distributor or a war and you'll get a replacement back. Pretty affordable starting at less than $200, depending on different switch product lines and everything else. Those are the switches that we have now introduced to our own Cisco business family. We're pretty excited about it, considering that they complete the portfolio from a LAN infrastructure perspective. You have Cisco business wireless, you have Cisco business dashboard, and Cisco business switches now to build your entire network that is needed in this time. Love it. Thank you, Chan. This is pretty hey, Chandan, exciting. This is, this is Didi. Did I, did I hear that right? Like you're, you're giving these out at like 200 bucks a, a switch. This is a fully functional Cisco switch. Absolutely, Didi. We are pretty serious about this market. We know what this market is looking sure? for. Cisco Absolutely. OK, just checking, because I think this, this would be the first time in history that we were actually giving away a fully functional switch with power over Ethernet, remote monitoring capabilities with the dashboard. Um, it's backward compatible. You've got stacking. And, and you're, you're ready to put this on the shelves at $200. I just want to make sure I'm not. Uh... You're, 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 you're pretty correct. Good. <laughs> In fact, it's on the shelves um, if you if you call it that way, Didi. Um, based on our new experience that we built for small businesses online on Cisco.com, they can actually purchase now um, through a buy button, very, through a partner, um, and it lists all the pricing as well. So, I mean, great new experience for customers really focused on this market and this segment. That's right, Devin, and we, you announced this, I mean, your team did all of this work, so we, we actually announced this back in March, right, for the 
first time in the history of Cisco, you know, last 35 years, for the first time, we you put a buy button on Cisco.com, right? So tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, put a buy button. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. Um, for the first time, I think, in our history, we, we actually did a lot of data and analytics and insights and research with our small business communities. And what were the things that really mattered to them? What did they need in order to have a really great experience with Cisco? And what happened through that insight and that research was some really key capabilities came out and came to the top for us. Um, ratings and reviews on Cisco.com. Let me see how other people have rated your products. Great, we did it. Um, let me get a buy button. Let me just purchase through a partner. Um, great, we did that too. Um, and let me see the pricing. Why do I have to go to a, an account manager or a partner or look through loads and loads of data sheets to try and figure out what the pricing is? So we did that as well. You know, made sure that our pricing was aligned with where our partner's pricing is so that we're not overstating by, by MSRP. Um, so that was another one. We've also created this amazing product selector for small businesses where they're actually able, based on a few questions that they answer, will recommend uh, a set of products that would fit their need. So really, really great experience for our small businesses. I'm super excited about um, what we've been able to provide to them and what's coming in the future as well. So kudos to all of you. I mean, it sounds like some great work over the last few months to bring new products to market, really hone in on this segment of the business, um, our products, to the portfolio, to the brand, to the messaging, to the experience, everything is just really coming together. And I, I can truly see that this team cares about our small businesses, especially during this time of need. With that, um, there are a few questions coming in from online that I hope I can um, get you guys to answer for us. Um, so first, uh, there is one on um, Didi. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this this question. Um, how do you think the technology that that we've all talked about here today can be used to help small businesses recover in this new climate? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, look, there's the technology side, and then there's the business side to it, right? We completely understand more than any other segment, the small businesses are really going through a tough time, even from a, from a business standpoint. And then some of these changes like work from home and cyber crime, I mean, that's on the technology side. So let me take one at a time. From a business standpoint, you know, Cisco, Chuck Robbins, our CEO has announced the, the recovery, the, the business recovery program, which is available to all customers, including all of our small customers, which essentially says you pay 1% now, and then you get the equipment from us, we're not, we don't expect payment to the end of the year. You can calendar year, you can, you can pay us later. So just the whole deferred payment, help our customers through, uh, through the tough times that everybody's going through right now. From a technology standpoint, you know, the, the five pillars that you, that you saw earlier in the presentation, you know, yes, we know you're going to have to go back and open up the offices, open up your stores. You know, if you're a coffee shop, if you're a library, if you're a dentist office, we need to have that safe distancing capabilities that I talked about. So those are embedded within the Cisco products now. We talked about you know secure work from home, which is the combination of the right collaboration, security, and networking all working at the same time. So those are just two of you know uh, many examples of specific technologies that we're investing in to help our customers recover through the through the whole program. In addition to the the business aspects that I mentioned. Yeah, that's great. And I know there are a lot of efforts. Um, I know we have teamed up with many organizations across the globe, um, Amex, um, Stand for Small, and GoDaddy, um, many others across you know, the UK, EMIR, um, and APJC to help people in this time of need. I know there are a lot of programs out there helping people, so really appreciate that. Um, okay, on to the next question. Chandon, this one's for you. Um, there is a question around what is the future for network engineers um, like me who are not qualified in cloud domains? Um, it seems that everyone is saying the future is, is cloud services now. So what, what, what do you say to a network engineer um, that are not particularly certified or qualified in the cloud domain? 
Uh, well, it's actually a very interesting question, um, considering, you know, I've lived all my life in networking and I was transitioned to getting into the cloud side. So I, I still subscribe to the fact that cloud is the way to go. However, networking, infrastructure, learning and experience sets the right foundation because cloud is nothing but so many small networks getting connected together. So many silos that are brought together by the cloud. So it's exactly the same networking infrastructure. So learning that is absolutely important for all of us, not just from a career perspective, but also from business continuity. So I would say that we should all embrace it. We should build on top of it. And there are capabilities that Cisco has launched through DevNet uh, that I'm sure a lot of us have exposure to in our audience that can actually help prepare individuals to get onto the programming side of networking. That helps all of us you know, build on those skill sets that will set us up for different type of career growth. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, so question for you, Rachel. Have you seen examples of how small businesses are using the kind of technology like WebEx um, in to innovate their business models? Absolutely. So I don't know if you've heard of this thing called COVID, but most of the world is working off of uh, WebEx right now. And that we had an offer um where we we expanded the availability for webex and we made it free to anyone who needed a personal license this was before this call me message offer was available but we wanted to do something very very quickly and so right away we had tons of people coming in and saying thank you so much this really this this kept my business running it kept me going it kept me in contact with my customers and clients and i we never skipped a beat but without that you know video conferencing people fell out uh like left out people had no human connection people um did, couldn't keep their business going so it was truly all about that remote work and keeping that business continuity that um, that WebEx helped enable. And we were happy to um, make sure that everyone had access to it, not just our biggest customers. So that was a, a huge, huge kudos to our, our development team and our scale of the product. And if you are looking, if you are like a new user of WebEx, I would say to go to webex.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom. And there's a list of a few industries where they, they give you like classroom tips. If you're a okay. teacher, they give you some financial um, like uh, templates. If you're in the financial institution and, and just some of those just to keep your business running to make sure that you guys are up and going quickly. That's great. And, you know, I love how you say it's to keep people connected. But um, I have to tell you, sometimes I get on WebEx just to get away from my kids in this house full of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I get to talk to adults. Um, okay, uh, one more question. I'm, I'm going to go to um, Shannon for this one. Does Cisco Design support DNA and stacking? Uh, two different questions. So I think uh, first is uh, the stacking. So that's easy. We certainly can, can talk about it. Yes, the Cisco business switches support stacking. They're also backward compatible with the SBTG switches or the SG series switches that were there in the past. So obviously, you have the capability. Uh, the second part that comes is the DNA. When you think about DNA, that is our intent-based networking journey that we have built for um, you know, enterprise customer sets that comes with a lot of capabilities that we're looking for from a large enterprise network to be set up from a segmentation capability perspective. Uh, Cisco business uh, portfolio is focused on the small and medium networks where we're talking about less than 100, 200 people that are coming and connected that may or may not need that type of capability. We have product lines of Catalyst series that certainly support DNA and can be deployed in small medium businesses. And Cisco business is a portfolio that works on the same principles, but a different offer. So it doesn't support DNA. It works on Cisco business uh, principles using Cisco business dashboard which is the management entity you could choose to run without an appliance on any of the cloud capabilities that you have. Right. Um, just a follow up there, Chandon. Um, so no more UPOE for uh, the 350 series? I'm sorry, no more? No more UPOE. Oh yeah, so th these switches support the PoE plus capabilities. That means that they would go up to 740 watt power total on the switches. We do have some other switches coming up that will start supporting a lot more capabilities as well. Okay, great, great. Um, okay, so with, so, uh, and Didi, I'm gonna come to you for this one. Um, 
with so much around small business and the cyber attacks, um, how is Cisco keeping these small businesses and the, their customers safe? I think it's a great question. You know, I talked about the attack surface, you know, going from the office now to our homes. Um, but there's multiple chapters within, you know, what it would, what it takes to really secure a small business customer, their employees, their data, right? So you've got the data itself, right? All of the data, which is on the device, the intellectual property, all of the company data. Then you've got the devices, right? Like this device right now, it's, it's my office phone, it's my home phone, it's where I work, but it's also where I do Instagram, right? So the lines between an office device and, and, and a home device, those are blurred, right? And so a lot of these things which we bought from an Apple store or wherever else, I'm, I'm using it to work. So how do you really ensure that the device is not introducing any security loopholes? The third thing is the applications themselves, like email, right? And how do you really make sure uh, you know, cloud delivered security that your email traffic is secure. The next one is around protection from internet attacks. There are a lot of bad guys out there. They're attacking, you know, from the internet. These are DNS based attacks. So there's multiple layers to security and, and then the bad actors, they would not go with just one. They're, they're not going to attack just the identity or just the data. A fully coordinated cyber crime attack attacks the device, the identity, the you know, DNS, it's all very well coordinated. Unfortunately, what we see a lot of times is that these bad guys, they're not even looking for money. They're not, it's not even a ransomware attack. They're just doing it to put the business, the small businesses just disrupt them, right? Which is really sad. And so being the leader in the industry in security, we are bringing a lot of these technologies that are deployed in the Fortune 100 you know, enterprise companies, things like Talos, right? Threat intelligence. We're bringing that technology at the price, right price point to the small business, uh, you know, customer. So it's the breadth of our portfolio. And it's also the sophistication that we see, you know, in terms of security for large enterprises, we're bringing it to small. And that's why I think our solutions are truly differentiated versus point players in the industry. Could I, I add on some secure, please. just uh, just thinking about um, video conferencing for small businesses, you may be um, suaded to use like a video chat solution because maybe you only have a couple employees. But if you think about your data and what you're sharing over a meeting, that is your business plan, it's your competition, it's your financials, it's everything. And so your it is not just about enabling a video chat. You really do need a solution to protect your data. Um, and WebEx meetings has that built in. So that WebEx work bundle is the exact same that governments run on. It's the exact same that we give to our enterprises. So you have that security that is built in from a, you know, from a brand like Cisco that you can know and trust. So I just want to make sure that you're not thinking that small businesses don't like just surpass the um, collaboration portfolio as something that is just like you could just pick up anything that that security really belongs there too. Yes, absolutely. Wholeheartedly. Um, you know, the security, like you said, the sharing of these really secure documents is a, is a dangerous thing if not doing it over a really secure um, platform instead of tool. So um, quick question here, and Didi, this one's gonna go to you, and this one's gonna be a little bit of a tough one. Um, Cisco has always been known as a company focused on our large enterprise customers, right? That's sort of bread and our butter. Um, why the shift to small? Like, why now? Well, so I think first off, it's the small businesses that really fuel the economy. You know, it's 66% of businesses on this planet are small businesses. And what we re realized, yes, Cisco as a company started with the high end of the enterprise and, and commercial, but what we realized is the requirements of a small business are not drastically dri different, you know, from what the large enterprises need. You know, they've got the same concerns around security. They've got the same concerns around making things simple, the same concerns around like having to deal with fewer vendors. And what we found is, you know, we've had this expertise, 
Um, of course, we need to tweak our products a little bit to make them, and also from a pricing standpoint, which is why I was giving Chandan a hard time. So, you know, tweaking it, getting it at the right price point, getting the technology available through that buy button that you've put on the on our web page. But with, with efforts like that, we can really help out the small business customers just the way we've helped out large enterprises for the last 35 years. And uh, like I said, you know, the small businesses there, they fuel the economy, like 80% of the workforce worldwide is in small businesses. Um, and we've got the right technology and that's why we are focusing on this segment as a company and this is the right time to do it. So I'm going to ask all three of you, any of you uh, wine lovers? Yes. Raise your hand. <laughs> I, think we, I think we might all agree, right? Um, so we have a, a small business owner that is asking a question who started their own winery um, probably a year or two ago. And um, as a passion project, right? Because they love wine. And now they're asking, where should I focus if I'm just looking to run and grow my business? What do I start with? It's really interesting because it's a whole different, it's a, it's a winery. Like how do you even, where do you start? Uh, um, well, from a marketing perspective, so I'm wearing my marketing hat, geez. I would say brand and online presence because not everyone's going to a winery tasting, especially these days. What if you, the world went remote and you had no online presence and nobody recognized your name? So I would say that's paramount. Great, great advice. I would agree. And secure your website. Make sure you buy your domain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. And online shipping is always, online ordering and shipping is always great. Absolutely. I, I would add to that, Rachel, um, and, and to our to the to this winemaker. First off, you just focus on the quality of wine. Like no <laughs> amount of IT, oh yeah, or security, oh, yeah. or collaboration is gonna is gonna if if the wine is not good, then you know nothing else matters. So focus focus <laughs> on the quality of wine. Leave the IT to companies like like Cisco to help you out, and the partners to help you out. So we want you to focus on on the wine. Uh, but yeah. look, every business has got to be a digital business now. I mean, and I think the pandemic just accelerated, you know, that requirement. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to put your products online. You don't have, you can't, you can't be going from store to store, you know, putting bottles on, on shelves. Um, it has got to be 24 seven. Your website cannot go down even for a second, just like Facebook or Google or Amazon. That is where the consumer's bar is set at that high. Web page is down for five minutes. Guess what? That customer is never going to come back to your web page. So it's got to be always on. Um, it's got to be secure. Um, and so, from an IT standpoint, the combination of you know the right infrastructure, security, and then collaboration with your suppliers, like people who are actually making the grapes and the vendors and all of the partners that you need to work with, that collaboration communication has to be always on. So that would be my two cents. Love it, love it, and I agree with you. Focus on the winemaking. Um, yes. leave, leave the other stuff to, to us. Um, I want to thank each of you. This has been amazing. I think I've gotten so much out of this. I know the audience has as well. The questions keep pouring in, um, and I really appreciate the time. We will follow up. Um, please feel free to uh, give us a nod, and I think there will be a short link here displayed to um, the audience for you guys to visit our blog. Um, and make sure you go to our website and check out our new Cisco designed experience. Thank you all and have a good one. Thanks, Evan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Where smart ports and connected highways are helping alleviate one of the most dense transportation networks in the world. In Italy, where Dallara helps automakers around the world make high-performance cars faster and safer. Cisco is digitally transforming their business, the way they work, think, and interact. At Rakuten in Japan, 
who partnered with Cisco to build the first cloud-based and fully virtualized mobile network.